Back here on Aces TV, my name is Michael Mark Cantonini. I'm joined by Ryan Lavarnway, Matt O'Neill, and JD Osborne, the catchers for the Melbourne Aces. Guys, thanks for taking the time today. We're here to talk about catching and really all the ins and outs of the position. First thing I want to ask you guys is uh, how you originally became a catcher. Ryan, we'll start with you. I was seven years old and I was the only one that wasn't afraid to catch. So it was easy. <laughs> Similar for you, Matt, or how did you end up becoming a catcher? Uh, my dad caught in college, and uh, on our little league team, we didn't have a catcher, and so he volunteered me without my my say, but uh, ended up working out all right. Okay, JD, how about you, man? Uh, I was in pro ball, basically. <laughs> um, I was an infielder, corner guy, and then they just figured they put me behind the plate just to see if I could do it. Okay. All right, so do, did you guys have any favorite catchers growing up, like a specific guy that spent most of his time behind the plate that you followed? JD, we'll start with you on that one. Uh, they kind of did it with Brett Lowry a little bit with the national team. Um, so I think that's where my initial spark for trying to get behind the dish started. But yeah. Do you have any favorite catchers growing up following the game? Uh, probably Buster Posey. I really liked him. I was a Red Sox fan growing up, so Jason Maritain was also a good one to watch. I like it. How about you, Ryan? I grew up a Dodger fan, so for me it was Mike Piazza and Charles Johnson was like the defensive specialist, and then also Jason Veritek was a consummate professional. Some good names were thrown out there. So like some of you guys have said, and this is a position that not a lot of kids want to play growing up. I mean, a lot of times somebody gets thrown back there out of necessity. Uh, the positive side of things, what do you guys like most about catching? Matt, we'll start with you on this one. I think you get to play like a little bit different game than everyone else, working with the pitchers and you know trying to figure out how we're going to get the other team out. It's more proactive instead of reactive, which most of our game is reactive, and you get a chance to really kind of put your stamp on it and put a game plan together with pitchers. And uh, yeah, it's like you're playing a little bit of a chess game within the baseball game. So I really enjoy that. JD, for somebody who hasn't caught as long as these other guys, what do you like most about the position? It's new, honestly. <laughs> Um, yeah, just being able to connect, you know, with someone else on the field. Um, it's not entirely up to you. It kind of takes the pressure off yourself. Um, you get to communicate and understand what someone else's game of a, or attack plan is, and you get to, you know, expose the other team for their weaknesses. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, Ryan, what are your thoughts on that? What do you like most about it? Uh, I like being involved in every pitch, and the fact that you can go to the field and not get any hits, not provide any offense, and still help the team win the game. Um, my favorite part of catching is when me and the pitcher are on the exact same page and we're just cruising through a lineup, and it, it feels like the other team doesn't even have a chance because we're executing pitches, we're executing our game plan, and we're, we're out thinking them, out maneuvering them before they, they can even respond. And a catcher's the position that I've played the most throughout my life playing baseball, and I think it's the most important position on the field. Now maybe you can argue pitcher is, but of the other eight positions on the diamond, I think catcher is the most important. What's the biggest challenge as a catcher for you? The biggest challenge is separating your offense from your defense. So that's the first challenge that I had to figure out. Because uh, again, if you can still help the team win the game without swinging the bat well at all. Um, and then once you kind of get past that, then the challenge becomes understanding different pitchers, different styles, different repertoires. And a guy like me, I've played for so many different teams, I need to I need to be able to understand what a guy does really quickly. Have a similar answer for you guys, or uh, you got a different idea, the most challenging part of the position? I mean, I think Ryan hit the nail on the head is separating the offense and the defense. I mean, I still struggle with that at times. Um, you know, you want to go hit, but at the same point, you get a really important job to do behind the plate, and you know, there's more than just you depending uh, on your performance back there, so I think that's the biggest one for me that I'm still always working on. How about you, JD? Probably the physical component of it, honestly. <laughs> like, if you if you just go behind the plate and someone just feeds a ball in there, yeah, you can maybe like catch it. But if you start working with guys that have like a bunch of sync or some horizontal or vertical movement on their ball or their sliders, you know, that's really hard to like catch. So there's like certain technique that you have to learn in order to get success in that. Um, there's blocking, you know, there's the mental portion of it. There's catching the ball and throwing the ball, transfers. There's an abundance of components that a catcher needs to have, so yeah. So those are three really unique answers there, and it's so cool just to hear the perspectives that you guys have because you all have different backgrounds playing the position and in baseball. Uh, a couple of you guys mentioned 
you know, staying sharp at the plate uh, while also, you know, balancing out the work behind the plate. Uh, how do you still make sure you're getting your cuts in in the cage and staying sharp, um, you know, watching film on opposing pitchers so you can, you know, go up there and do damage at the plate while still doing everything you need to do defensively? I feel like it's, it's on you at the end of the day. Like, you, you gotta, like, go grab a coach and be like, hey, I got cut on DP to make you know, take me swings. Um, but, you know, I think I haven't done it as long as Ryan has, but I've even come to see that it's really not as important you getting your swings as it is getting in tune with the pitchers and getting them ready and even being in there for the bullpen and just seeing what's different this week than it was last week or two weeks ago and what's working. It uh, makes a really big difference in, you know, those games on the weekend. So uh, I think, yeah, you just got to find a way to get some, get some in on your own. JD, how do you make sure you still make sure you get your cuts in and all your work offensively? Just time management. You know, you just got to get to the field and know where your priorities are and have a plan before you get there instead of just showing up and then trying to scramble around and get everything in. Um, that really helped me, at least. Yeah. How about you, Ryan? For me, it's more about um, understanding the importance of quality reps versus quantity of reps, especially as I've gotten older, 35 now. I don't need to take 100 swings a day. I, you know, if I get 25 good swings, that's more than enough. And, and then make sure I do the thing that's important is making sure I'm with my pitchers, listening to what the pitching coach is saying about the adjustments he's working on, what is his thought process, what's his target, um, what verbiage is he using when he talks about you know, getting on his backside, opening up the front side. Because when you can speak the same language as the pitcher, when you're trying to give him a tip, then they really hear it and they understand it better. So, JD, you, you mentioned it up earlier. Um, you know all the things that go into defensively, and as much work as you have to put behind the plate, working with different pitchers. How do you guys keep your bodies in shape, uh, whether it's in the off season or even in season, uh, to be able to go back there and you know catch nine innings every night? And um, you know because it's a position that's so different from every other one on the diamond. And Matt, I want to start with you on this one because uh, you know I've seen this season in Melbourne how much work you put into kind of staying in shape and being flexible, and mobile back there. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I haven't figured it out yet. I'm still, like, trying new stuff and trying to figure out what really gets my body ready uh, every day to catch nine innings. That's my goal is if I can catch every game throughout the week, like, that would be ideal. Obviously, it's not a reality, but, uh, no, I just mess around with different stretches and different kind of exercise regimens, and uh, I found some things that help me, but I'm still trying to figure out what exactly is uh, that, that right formula, but... Uh, yeah, it just takes a little bit of time to get to know your body and know how you react after catch a 13 inning extra inning game or if you catch a really quick nine inning game what you need to do to get ready the next day so it uh it changes it definitely changes but it's always kind of like what can i find to really help uh, my recovery and get me ready brian you've been doing it for a while is there anything that you do specifically to make sure you can go back there every night and catch yeah so because i've been doing it so long i know what part of my body is going to break down first yeah. Um, so I have an oblique program, I have a forearm extensor program, um, a shoulder program, basically anything that has gotten hurt in the past, I, I do the rehab as a prehab okay. to make sure that I don't re-injure the same thing. And over the years, as a, as a new part of your body starts to pop up, you add that to the program. And find a way to, to do it efficiently so that you're not spending two hours in the gym every day. You just do what you need to do to get ready and again, at this point, I'm plenty strong. I'm not. I'm not trying to get stronger. This. I'm trying to maintain, stay healthy because my best ability is my availability on the field. So what you're saying goes back to the theme of proactive versus reactive. And JD, for someone who hasn't played the position as long and you've transitioned to becoming a catcher in pro ball, uh, what have you had to do differently uh, to get your body in shape to catch that you didn't do before you became a catcher? Ooh, I mean. It's, it's different for all of us, you know? Like these guys are gonna be back there every single day. They know where they're gonna be at majority of the time. For me, I'm utility, so I gotta be able to get all those other reps in as well while staying sharp behind the plate. Um, it's, it's a tough question, but I mean, I just try and get back there as much as I can, to be honest. Um, whenever I can and whenever there is someone around that I can learn from or be around the other catchers or go receive with you know, the, if these guys pull out the machine, go receive with them. If they're blocking, go receive with them so I can stay sharp and hear what they're talking about so that way I don't lose um, what I gain, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Ryan, um, I want to go to you with this one. Uh, you've played in 10 different big league seasons uh, with a lot of different teams. 
Take me through an average day of working with a starting pitcher on a day where you know you're, you're starting behind the plate. What do you do from the, the minute you get into the ballpark through the end of the game, just working with the pitcher? Uh, so it really starts as soon as the last game of the series prior ends. Okay. As you're packing up your locker, you're getting on the plane to fly to the next city, you are getting either a binder back in the day or now you're getting an iPad uh, with a scouting report on the next team. And you start to study the hitters that you're gonna face. You really lock in on the nine everyday players and then you hit a couple who's gonna pinch hit. Um, and you, you're coming from a base of knowledge of I already know what my pitching staff has. So how is that? How am I going to use that against these hitters? And I, I like to come up with a general game plan and try to take hitters down into a, a couple categories. Like this is a an away early in late guy because he makes a, a two strike adjustment. Um, this is a guy we're going to pound in. This is a guy that we're going to get him out with a breaking ball and just show him a fastball. Uh, this guy doesn't hit changeups well. You know, try to try to lump them into things that are easy to remember. And then from there, on the day of the start. Starting pitcher is one of the last guys to report to the stadium. He's doing his thing to make sure he's physically ready. You're gonna have a, a scouting meeting with the starting pitcher, the pitching coach, and the starting catcher every day before every game. You're gonna take what you've learned about these hitters, and then depending on what day of the series it is, what have they done in the last couple days, or you've watched a video if it's the first game of the series on what they've done in the last five games. So this is what they're doing. Uh, this is what they've done lately, this is how they're being pitched, and this is how we are going to use your specific stuff to attack them. There's so much that goes into it, and it's fascinating to hear how early the prep, you know, for that the guy's next start, um, how early it starts. So, uh, Matt and JD, for you guys, ha has the prep been similar to what Ryan's been talking about since you've been in pro ball? Yeah, I think I probably missed out on the binder days, where we get the binders, but... Uh, the iPad now, it's like yeah, a lot but, easier. Yeah, but for the most part, no, it's getting the information. Um, knowing it yourself and then kind of applying it to, like Ryan said, what are these guys doing now? How are we going to use it? And, and who's pitching? And how does that match up work with the information that I know? How about you, JD? Yeah, the same approach. I mean, it's really just that communication as well with that pitcher and, you know, laying it all out on the table. There could be so much information out there, but if that guy doesn't have his stuff that day, you got to, you know, adjust and attack hitters accordingly on that, you know, on the fly there. So there's a bunch that goes into it. <laughs> I love it. So well, let's wrap this interview up. Uh, question for all three of you. Um, you know, Ryan, you know, you just got here a uh, short amount of time ago. Matt and JD, you guys have been here all season. Uh, what have you learned from each other um, since joining the Aces? JD, we'll start with you on this one. That uh, Matt eats burgers all day long and cheese. <laughs> uh, no. Um, these guys are, you know, very unique in their own styles. And something that I like to take in catching is little bits from each guy. Um, my setup was a little bit different to Matty's and I started actually using his out, outward angle of his ankle when he got behind the dish, which actually opened up my hips a little bit more and I started getting underneath some pitches while I was back here, but yeah. What have you learned from these guys, man? I think Ozzy is in a unique spot that I've never really been in where he might catch one game week, he might catch two, but he's gotta be taking ground balls, taking fly balls, and then find time to like go. He was catching uh, Mira and uh, Q a lot early in the year, and he like developed a relationship with them really quickly and got on the same page with them, and it was pretty seamless. And so um, I might at some point like take that for granted where I have all this time, and he doesn't have as much time. He's got to do it really quickly, and he did a really good job of that. So it was good to see that. And, uh, and from Ryan, I don't know, I feel like he's got a lot of good stuff in that head of his. He's got a lot of experience, but uh, I'm still trying to get some more out of him. We'll uh, see how the next couple weeks go. I love it. Now, Ryan, you're, you're the new guy here. Um, have you been able to pick up anything from these guys or at least, you know, throw some pointers their way? Um, so I look, I, I feel like the grandpa on the team at this point, right? Um, and I look at these these young pups. Uh, uh, and I can I can be a realistic self-evaluator. And I can see that physically, Maddie's a better receiver than me. I, and I haven't seen JD catch in the game yet. Um, but I, just to go on Maddie, Maddie's probably uh, got quicker feet and a quicker release to me and a stronger arm to second base. But the value that I have to the team still is I'm going to play my game, I'm going to help the pitcher play his best game, and I'm going to manage the game as a whole. And that's a whole nother level that experience has taught me. It's like understanding like this right now is the most important pivotal point in the game. And before we throw this pitch, I'm gonna go make sure me and the pitcher are on the same page. 
because we're not going to give up this run and we're especially not going to give up this run unless both of our brains agree that we have the right pitch. So, so there's more to just the physicality of catching. Um, and with my experience and the things that I've learned over the years, that's what I'm hoping to teach these guys or talk with these guys about before I leave. I love it. Well, guys, this was a really fun conversation for me. I uh, get just getting to talk about catching and all the ins and outs of it. We could go on forever, uh, but really appreciate the time. JD Osborne, Matt O'Neill, Ryan Lavarnway, I'm Michael Mark Cantonini. Thanks for taking the time to tune in on ACES TV.